Okay, it's 7.02, so I guess we should start. Um, my name is Krista Ninavaji. I am co-chair with Ryan Cunningham of the Mentorship Committee as part of the Alumni Association Leadership Council. Uh, we wanted to put together a panel today to talk about uh, the new efforts we've made to formalize mentorship uh, through our alumni community and, and uh, the RUC student body. And um, just a little bit about myself. I uh, graduated in 02 with a Bachelor of Architecture. I have been working in interior design and architecture for the last uh, almost 20 years now, which is really daunting to, <laughs> to say that. It seems like a lot of years. Um, I started my own firm just about six years ago. Uh, we're a boutique seven person firm uh, in lower Manhattan. We do a mix of all kinds of stuff. Um, hospitality is probably my favorite, but we also end up doing a lot of um, multifamily residential. We do retail stores, offices, and kind of like to keep it a mixed bag. I think it's, it's uh, more interesting and just love what I do. And I love RISD, so that's why I'm here. So um, I'll just hand it over to Ryan if you want to introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Ryan Cunningham. Um, I'm a director, uh, producer, writer uh, in the film and television industry. Um, I'm also the co-owner of the New York City Post House uh, Running Man, which we started about uh, 12 years ago, and the development company Running Woman, which I started two years ago. Um, and I'm also a uh, you know, co-chair of the mentorship committee with uh, Krista. And um, we wanted to add a note that this is being recorded and it will be available at a later date to anybody that um, wants to view it, <laughs> feels that it's somehow uh, got something to share. Um, and uh, with that, um, I am gonna pass this to Nate. Thank you. Hi everyone, Nathan Kendrick here. Uh, 1998, graphic design. Um, love RISD, amazing uh, experience that I still remember to this day. Actually, James is, uh, is a classmate of mine, so we've stayed in touch for many, many years, and we'll get into that. Um, I'm a co-founder partner at a company called Design Math, and we're also a consultancy. Uh, we've been in business now for about 15 years, so it's been a long time. We've gone through all the ups and downs, and uh, while the pandemic is a bit unique, um, it's just uh, another one of those kinds of ups and downs that we've endured through. Our company is about 30 people. We've been kind of upwards of 40 plus uh, over the years, uh, and we really focus on user um, experience design. Uh, anything that has to do with digital, uh, primarily B2B, uh, we also do like B2C as well, so like eBay, is a good example in that category. Um, but uh, yeah, really excited to um, hopefully share some, some experience with you. Should I hand this off to Renee? Hi, everybody. My name's Renee Payne, and I'm a graduate in GD in 1983, so I go way back. And I go way back, but I've really come full circle in the season. I'm just completing a four-year uh, diversity fellowship at RISD and I uh, focused on social equity inclusion initiatives and I also had an opportunity to teach art uh, for social change and I have a graphic design firm and it's a small studio and I've had it for 15 years as well. I've got a range of clients. Uh, major focus uh, these days, companies called Favor Design and Communications and I've actually started a whole new entity called Included which focuses on social equity inclusion initiatives. And just the timing of where we are with the world right now, it's been exceedingly busy, uh, really focusing on the areas of COVID, uh, what's happening with racism uh, from clients like Harvard University to Sankofa, a social justice organization. And I've really had the, uh, the pleasure of not only mentoring a number of students here at RISD, um, but also on a national level. So. Um, mentorship is a huge part of where my heart is right now, not only for the business, but just personally. So it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. 
Uh, and last, uh, I'm James Wynn. Uh, as um, Nate said, we were classmates together uh, in graphic design in the late 90s. And, um, you know, I've had a pretty, pretty diverse career. I was pretty aggressive with the internships back when we were in school. So I, <laughs> I did internships all over the place. I was pretty motivated back then. Um, and since spent about a third of my career working in, in design firms and then um, worked inside a bunch of companies in, in sort of creative roles and eventually went to business school and spent uh, almost 10 years working in consulting, spent a couple of years uh, in the venture capital world. And now I'm leading a team inside Gensler, which is the largest design firm in the world. Um, so I've seen this sort of question from a lot of different sides and, and a lot of different dimensions, you know, from within big companies, within small agencies, um, as an intern, <laughs> as someone seeking mentorship, and then somebody who's been providing it in various ways. So um, I'm going to play a little bit of the role of uh, moderator tonight, although this is a pretty um, smart, opinionated and free speaking group. So I don't know that you guys need so much moderation, uh, but I'll try to give us a little bit of structure and keep things moving along. Um, and we've, we've kind of broken the, the hour into three chunks. The first uh, 20 minute ish discussion will be, you know, sort of what is mentorship? What are we talking about? How does it work? Um, what are some of our experiences, both uh, seeking mentorship and providing it. And um, and then we'll spend about 20 minutes on sort of like, how do you do it? Uh, what what are some good tools, tactics, techniques? What have we seen work well? Um, what, you know, what, what have we seen not work so well? <laughs> and then we want to leave a good solid 20 minutes for questions because we know there's quite a few people here and you know, we want to open it up to the community and, and um, get as much of a dialogue going as we can, given the fact that we're using uh, Zoom webinar. So we can, we, we have to take questions through the, uh, chat function. And I'm sure at this point, everybody on here is an absolute Zoom expert. So we don't need to be talking about sort of how it works, but just submit your questions through uh, the chat and we'll do our best to scroll through it. Actually, the Q&A. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Ryan's a bigger Zoom expert than I am. So, you know, <laughs> right? but you know, part of mentorship is like looking for, you know, advice and guidance wherever you can get it. Uh, so I think to kick us off, let's talk a little bit about, you know, uh, what is mentorship? And, 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 you know, I personally find that kind of an interesting question because, you know, for me, there's a kind of like, there's an idea of like, uh, you know, so-and-so is my mentor. And that feels sort of weighty and like, oh, who's, who's going to take on that role and, and, and it's for life and, you know, it's, it's pretty heavy. And then, but then on, on the far end of the spectrum, you can say, you know, two peers could mentor each other, right? So there, there's a big difference between the sort of mentor as person and mentor as action. And I thought that'd be an interesting place to, to open it up um, to the group. So what are we talking about when we talk about mentorship? For me, I think it's just being willing to be open to answer questions when they need them. You know, um, I take a lot of interns, um, and have a lot of like exclusive RISD internships uh, with my company Running Man. And um, I always try to offer, like if they were a great intern, um, I'm now available to you. So if you have questions, if you're trying to make a decision about, you know, what job should I take or what career path should I go or you need any sort of direction like I'm here I you know contact me and I'll find half an hour to talk to you and kind of give you some advice um you know look at resumes things like that um I I think that you know you can be a mentor without it being like a huge time suck and the way that I look at it is that um it's, you know, I'm making an investment in my future hiring pool. And I do like really often hire from my former interns um, because I, it's, you see it as like just one giant job interview. You know, you really get to the, the time to, you know, by the end of an internship, like who you would want to hire, who you'd want to be, uh, be working with, who you work well with, so. Yeah, and I think, I think that you have different types of mentors throughout your life and career and, you know, in broad strokes, I do being somebody's mentor does feel very weighty, but, and in a way, the word I'm about to use is also a little weighty that you're somebody's role model in a way, but 
not in the sense that they want to emulate you or be your life, but, or, or have your exact life. I think that sometimes you just need to see how that roadmap leads you or where, or how it's been, it's been uh, traveled because basically like I th- what I'm trying to say is at different points in my life, I've had different types of mentors, whether it's somebody who's a peer or somebody who's, you know, gone in one direction. Maybe it's taking my life, for example, just doing more interiors or more architecture or more kind of on the business side of things. And I, I almost feel as though having those few mentors and there are a handful of people I can identify by thinking about, okay, well, they've taken this career path and this is what their life looks like and kind of talking to them about what that's like is different than ta- than somebody who might have taken a different path. And so I think there's, you know, it's not like you're going to have one mentor, one role model, and you're going to follow in their footsteps the your, for your whole life. I think it's, you know, it's a constant searching to see where you are in your career and your life, how, how you're going to find somebody that you can kind of check in with just to see how did you get here? What are the challenges? What are the benefits? Uh, oh, you know, maybe, maybe it's not a lifestyle for you and you want to, um, you know, check out a different type of career path. Um, and I think it's really important, especially with a, a school like RISD, we all come out and we have these circuitous careers and, uh, you know, there's not a straight way to get to where you want to go. And we're very creative about how, how we achieve the things that we do in our, in our professional lives. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's part of why I wanted to participate on a mentorship committee. Yeah, I, I would add to that. I totally agree. What came to mind, and I don't know if I should say this, but it's uh, being a mentor is not uh, a monogamous relationship. <laughs> um, yeah. For sure, it's, it's, you know, time and stage that you're at, you'll have a mentor that's appropriate. And, and when I rewind and think of people that I view as mentors, some of them aren't even an explicit relationship, right? So some of them are just on reflection on my, yeah, they were a damn good mentor. There, there are some things that they taught me or advised me or coached me or said that uh, really had profound influence on, on my career. And, and a lot of that stuff is, is actually less about the skill. It was really more about like values and principles and giving me the inside understanding of how something worked. Um, but yeah, it's kind of weird to say, but it's, you know, it's not a monogamous relationship and, and it may not be explicit. You may not say, hey, do you want to be my mentor? Um, it could really just be what you're getting out of it ultimately creates that, that notion of the world. Yeah, that's a really good point. I don't know if any of my mentors have known that they've been my mentors. Hmm. It's just sometimes people you go to for advice and I you to just keep going to them over and over again for their knowledge and experience. When I think of mentorship, I think of accountability. That's the first mm-hmm. word that really comes to mind. And I, you know, I think about accountability and I think, think about high school, believe it or not. And my first experience uh, in terms of mentorship was my high school teacher. I mean, I, I remember vividly, he took every Saturday drove me to RISD, not knowing anything about the school, and said, I know this great school that I think you should you know, possibly attend and take figure drawing classes. And for six weeks, those six weeks changed my life. I don't think I ever would have been at RISD if it wasn't for my high school teacher. And not only accountability, but that's his time. That, that was his Saturdays. And you have to understand it's a commitment. You know, when, when you take on that role as a mentor, I don't take it lightly, you know, because you understand the impact that it has on somebody's life. So ultimately they want to feel that trust in you that you are accountable and they can go to you when they need, when they need support. So. That's, that's fascinating. So it, we, we've just covered like everything on the spectrum there from, uh, a person who doesn't even know they're being a mentor, but said something that was profound and affected uh, Nathan's life to, you know, Renee, the example of your teacher who c- clearly knew what they were doing, <laughs> right? And what, and, uh, and, and committed in a very big way. Um, I think what would be interesting to talk about next is, you know, if those are the, the, the sort of different ways that you could think about being 
a mentor. What makes for a good mentee? What is the, the, the role or the, the, the best way to be a mentee to get the most out of that relationship? I'll start with you, Renee, why not? Well, I think the role of a mentee, and I could take that by experience because there are a number of students right now that I'm working with, is that they want to soak it up. They wanna know and understand as much as they can about the field, about the work, about the client relationship, about the emotional aspects of what you should be feeling and maybe not. So it's not always professional. And I think that's important to understand. And I think part of being a mentor is being able to cross that line and read when it's time to speak about the specifics of the profession and then the specifics of how you can really, you know, help somebody evolve in terms of who they are as an individual. So again, I think it's that ability to be open to, to ask the questions and, and feel that, that there's nothing that you can't ask. And I think that's the relationship a mentor should have with a mentee. You know, They may not be questions that you ask everybody, but that's what a mentor is for, that you can ask them the things that you might not ask, ask anybody. So. Yeah, I, I agree that, um... You know, a lot of a lot of some of the the work that I do and and the advice that I give, it uh, has to evolves around like how to navigate the politics of the industry, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, understanding you know exactly kind of the right way to approach things or ask things and like when it's appropriate to speak versus like knowing your place, um, and. Um, completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. It'll come back to me. Um, I think, I think to be a good men mentee, I, you know, it, it's just about asking lots of questions. You know, I think that I find it really rewarding in a way when somebody who is, is kind of asking me things or, or, you know, trying to gain some knowledge from just asking questions. I find it really rewarding to almost hear what the questions are and they're interested in. And it always surprises me because the advice or the things that I would want to tell them might be very different than the things that are on their minds. And it could be, you know, and it, it, that's because of, you know, probably age and experience and what's going on in the world. And so it's always very telltale what, you know, what pops up from, uh, you know, from, from, you know, younger, younger people just entering the field who, or, or even not necessarily even younger, but people with less experience that, that might need some mentorship. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I also think like, it's about um, doing your research ahead of time and like knowing who it is that you're being exposed to and really, you know, take the time to ask those questions you know, prepare, like, think about what you really want to ask and what you want to get out of this. I think that's a good point, Ryan. I, I think also, don't be afraid to say, who do I want to mentor me? You know, mm -hmm. I think it's important to go through the process of saying, I want to be selective about that person. Um, mm -hmm. What are the yeah. things that I'm looking for for myself? You know, it's not always the the direction of the mentor bringing somebody in. But I think it's a good lesson for you to learn in life, you know, is again, what type of firm might I work at and what type of people do I want to work with? So yeah. And who's that's, the right person to good, trust? Yeah. That's such and it's such a good point. It's you know, it's who you who you pick as a somebody to mentor or to be your mentor, it almost needs to be aspirational in a way. It's you know, it should be the, the top of and beyond of where you could imagine so that you could kind of strive to, to kind of excel and exceed. Yeah, I uh, totally agree that that context is in relevancy is, is really important. And I think since we're talking to what I assume are juniors, seniors at VISD, um, it really is in that, that kind of mindset of entering the professional world and finding a mentor that, that can really be helpful in that respect. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's just, that's just so important that the context and the relevancy 
um, for, for what you're looking at. And so maybe the lesson here as well is, is just being intentional. Um, I think I think students and at least I I maybe didn't have enough wherewithal to realize that that it, it is a two-way street, right? There's value really in both directions. Um, and I think as a student, especially as you're graduating, you've been kind of beaten down for four years at RISD. And so you 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 kind of forget that you know you you also have agency, you also are selective. Of, of the mentorship or the advice that you're seeking. Um, yeah. So being intentional about it is, is certainly an attribute. I, I, would think. I, think, I, I think the two-way street points is really important. You know, it's, it's, it's worth stating. You know, I, I think sometimes people can be a little scared to ask or, or I don't want to bother you or, you know, hesitant to reach out and, and we'll get a little bit later into like how to do that well and some of the etiquette and things like that but putting that aside um it's important to understand that actually the, the mentor gets something out of it too right so partly you want to you know we do this because it makes us feel good and smart and you know like we're contributing and giving back and helping people all of those things but also like it's a little bit like teaching sometimes you don't know what you think until you tell somebody else so sometimes it's actually really helpful to say, well, actually, this is this is a, this is actually how I think I would do that. You know, and we may not even know it, but but it's actually value to us to be able to sort of think about those kinds of ideas and and talk about it out loud. Uh, mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to ask. Um, I think maybe we should move a little bit into some of the like tactical side of the conversation. It's actually going super fast, so that's always it's always a good sign. Um, yeah, like you know tips, tricks, how do you ask, like, what, 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 what should you avoid? What should, what should you definitely do? Um, and maybe we'll start with like how to ask, because how to ask a good question is actually a really, really, really important skill. So how do you ask for help? I think it's important to know what it is you're asking for. You know, are you asking for an internship? Are you asking for are you asking a specific question? Are you asking for general advice? You know, um, so that, you know, it, it, it's always helpful when you're reaching out to someone that you have like something very specific to ask them that you, they can just be like, okay, yes, this. Cause if it's just sort of like a general, like, mm -hmm. hi, um, then it becomes a bit uh, awkward and uncomfortable. Um, I do want to mention, I have to plug this because it's something that Krista and I um, were very big on uh, pushing uh, with the mentorship committee, um, is that uh, the RISD network, which is risdnetwork.risd.edu, um, is for current students and also for alumni. And um, you can go on and you can make a profile and you can see all of the people that are there that have already signed up that um, are willing to be mentors, are willing to give you a half hour phone call or Zoom or um, you know, answer some questions via email or you know, that you could reach out to for potential internships. And there is a, like a format within it that um, helps you write the email, like makes suggestions and is like, hey, that's maybe not such professional language. Um, and so I just wanted to uh, note that, that that does exist for um, the alumni and the students. There's also um, kind of a discussion forum on here, which I'd love to see kind of be even more utilized where people could just post I always check it um, and there's just, uh, you know, I, I do get uh, a lot of cold emails from stu current students, which is great. And people just reach out asking questions. Um, I'm always happy to to give my advice, but but also this discussion forum is really interesting because anybody can, can read it. And so somebody can post a question. Somebody, the, the last one somebody posted was about stolen artwork. And um, Greg Kanan, who is uh, a, a friend and also a RISD grad who later went on to be a lawyer, 
is involved and he started, he tried to help answer the question. So it, it, it's, you never, you know, you never know who's going to be able to help you answer a question. Um, so it's kind of a, a cool feature of the RISD network. And, you know, I'd, I'd love to see that more utilized and that have a really kind of vibrant discussion going on there with lots of topics. Because as we all know, you almost learn more from your student, from your fellow students and your colleagues and your peers. So somebody might have a question that you also have. So it's great to see all of that kind of publicly posted. Yeah, and that I, was our official RISD network. Yeah. <laughs> That's our plug. <laughs> we, we didn't have it when we were in school. So we did. <laughs> well, it, you know, one of the reasons why we wanted to do this uh, panel is because we wanted to just like draw more attention to it and make sure that people know about it, are signing up for it, that they're aware of it, and that it doesn't, as an alumni, you know, it, it doesn't have to be an enormous ask out of your life. It's more just if you're willing to answer some questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to give just like a hot tip that I've yeah. learned really in, this, uh, in this in this topic. And so I, I've actually been back to RISD, I think like six years to do the portfolio day. We've actually hired uh, several interns and hired full time as well. And what, one of the hot tips is, is that in, in what I assume is your situation of, of looking for an internship, actively looking for an inter internship or even a full-time position. Um, one way to really find a mentor is to ask for an informational interview. And then all the bets kind of come off the table and the quality of the interview and the quality of the conversation that you have is I think better because they're not evaluating you. They're, they're, they're literally mentoring you, even if it's just in that informational interview, or if you guys found a, a strong connection, I would not be surprised if people say, hey, yeah, please follow up with any other questions, more than happy. Um, and so for me, that's been like, I would do informational interviews all day if I didn't have to make money, um, because they, they are different than an actual interview where the, the handshake is different. You're looking for different things and you're responding and, and answering in different ways. So, so it's just a little trick that you can use um, to, to get some time with, with someone whose time is, is pretty extensive. Yeah, I'll follow up. I'm gonna follow up on that and then Renee, I'll definitely take it after me, but, but uh, I totally agree. And actually one of my favorite hot tips, and this is actually useful for internships for, 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 for client work, for, for, for kind of like getting work, which is, it's a variation on that, which is, um, uh, hey, I'm interviewing at one of your competitors and I'd love to know what you think about them. That's and even like <laughs> everyone will take that meeting, right? Because <laughs> they're like, oh, huh. So, cause it's two things. One, it's like, oh, this person's actually, uh, this person, okay, my competitors are interested in them. Like they must be worth paying attention to. And I wanna know what my competitors are thinking, right? So it, it just will immediately be like, oh yeah, sure. I'll talk to you about them for, for sure. And then almost every single time I've ever done it, it results in, well, you should, you know, you should think about us, right? And, and then you're being invited <laughs> to, 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 to sort of, you know, interview or submit your work or whatever versus like you asking for them. So that, that's been like, I, throughout my career, it's been one of my favorite tricks. So sorry, Renee, you were gonna say something. Oh, no, I, I agree with that. And and I've also experienced going to uh, conferences, going to events, and uh, it's almost the perfect setup to not be so, form so formal. Mm -hmm. And I sat next to students and, you know, they, they seize the moment. And they recognize that's an opportunity to really make that connection. And some of the strongest relationships that I've developed have been when it hasn't been planned, when it hasn't been so um, process oriented, but very spontaneous. And uh, it's been effective because sometimes it's rare to get that kind of time one-on-one, -on -one, not only with students, but also with us. Uh, so take advantage when those uh, moments might come and uh and seize it yeah um i'm just 
kind of keeping an eye on some of the questions that are coming up and two mm. popped up particularly to this discussion. And one, I assume uh, it says, would that be a lie? Maybe just trying to like sneak your way into an interview with a competitor. And I, I don't think so because the way that I would approach it as somebody who interviews also frequently and, and does hiring, if somebody came to me and said, I'd really like to come and work at your company, Kanko, and um, you know, are you hiring? We're a small firm, so I'm often not hiring, but I always offer to do a portfolio review anyway. So if you, so I think, you know, James's uh, suggestion of saying I'm interviewing at your competitor, would you give me like a, a peer review or, or just a portfolio review? So, you know, if, if you come open and honest about that and you are interviewing at a, at a competitor, I think that makes sense. Or even just another way to get your foot in the door is to say, hey, I'd love to work for you. If you're not hiring, I'd still love to come in for a portfolio review. I mean, it never hurts to have more critique and to, to practice interviewing. And at the same time, you're still getting your stuff seen. And if the person is genuinely interested in you, chances are they're going to say yes if they're not hiring, if, there's, if they know that there's no pressure. Sometimes I don't call people in to interview because I feel like, well, I don't want to waste their time. I don't want to give their hopes up. But if they're offering just to say, hey, you know, I just want the practice. I just want somebody else to see my, my portfolio. Then it kind of softens that kind of hard line and expectation. Yeah. Um, I just to clarify, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend lying about it. I think. The, yeah. No lying. No lying. No, I think what I would say there is like, you know, either if you are interviewing with a competitor, like that's a really good trick. There's variations on it though. You could say, um, you know, quite specifically, I'm very interested in this particular type of firm, and I've, uh, you know, been, I've applied for a role at firm X, and I'd really just love to get your sense of that firm and others like them. And that may not be exactly the same. So I think in Krista's example, you could say, I'm really interested in, um, you know, uh, large scale office interiors. Uh, and, you know, I'm interviewing at Firm X and, you know, I know that's not exactly what you do, but I'd love your read on the market and this firm. And, you know, and it may turn out, you, you know, you, you might be really interested in Chris's firm too, but you're sort of soft, you're again, you're sort of turning on the volume. So it's not like I'm here for a job, hire me. Mm -hmm. Decide in this yeah. whether or not you want to hire me, right? Yeah. Um, there's another, another question just about, uh, are alumni willing to become mentors? And just going back to what Ryan and I were talking about with the RISD network, absolutely, there are a ton of alumni already registered on the network willing to become mentors. And so I yeah, would I, recommend. I think there's like over 1,200 at least. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you'd have a, a pick of, you know, which field or specialties I'm sure you can find out of 1200 alumni that um, you could probably reach out to a few people. If you're not sure who to reach out to, maybe even just use the discussion tool on there and, and just, you know, maybe sort of crowdsource the information a little bit and see maybe if anybody has any opinions or if somebody jumps to kind of help you, but definitely sign up for the RISD network and you will find a mentor, I, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> what other tips how about some don'ts if we don't have if you can't think of another good tip what's a, what's a don't don't be cocky yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that's a good one yeah and i, th I think we'll go ahead Kristen. i think i think we I, you know a lot of our discussion leading up to this panel we there was a lot of uh, discussion about mentorship versus internships and the confusion and kind of the gray line between between that relationship. And I think if you want an internship, just come out and say that you want an internship. If you want a, a mentor, come out and say you want a mentor. If you want both, say that you want both. Mm -hmm. I think you just have to be clear on what you want. And those are two separate things. You know, somebody comes to me and they say they want a mentor. Um, you know, I'm coming at it and I'm just giving them advice and they're not expecting me to hire, hire them or for an internship or as a junior position or whatever. So I just think just be very clear and don't be clandestine about what your actual motives are. 
Yeah, um, I, I think mentorship as a as an attribute is is useful to think about in that. So so if you ultimately you want an internship um, and you want mentorship, I, I think that's something important to hold on to. Some internships will not be mentorships. Right. Uh, some <laughs> some are are really foot in the doors that. Um, once you get that on your resume, you know, it's a stepping stone, but, but they, they may not, you know, have an attribute of mentorship. And, uh, and so just being discerning about that and, and what, what you want out of it is, is all part of it. Um, so just it does kind of come back to the intentionality and kind mm -hmm. of know what you're looking for, mm -hmm. um, making sure that thing is, is, has the attributes that you're looking for. Also, the expectations are very different from an internship to a mentorship. Because um, often the internship has a set period of time, um, might be a set assignments that are with that. And as we said, with a mentorship, uh, you don't know what the length of time is. And also you're crossing lines in that, in that relationship about things that you might ask and things that you might need. So they're different. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my, I, I hustled and I got this internship in London my, my junior year, I think, and uh, showed up. And the first day I sat in reception. Nobody, like, nobody knew I was coming kind of thing. The second day they were like, oh, go sit at that desk. There's no computer on it. I just sort of sat at this desk. It took about a week before anybody sort of realized what I was doing there. And eventually it turned out pretty well, but that was not mentorship. You know, <laughs> it was worth doing. There was a bunch of good reasons that it was worth doing, but it was definitely not the same thing as getting some mentorship. Just want to say that there are over 2000 alumni on the RISD network right now. Another thing I'll say, just a, it, it, it's kind of a do and a don't, um, and it, it's related to a little bit of what's been said here, but it, I think it's really important, which is, so to kind of build on the, the, the um, intentionality idea, you know, be kind of clear about what, what the question is and how much time the person has to give. And that's useful even in the moment. So it could be even in the context of a, an ongoing mentorship relationship, but you know, if you sort of show up to the first meeting or, or your first reach out and you're like, what should I do with my life? You know, like that's not a question that somebody who just met you can answer. And it's probably not a question you can answer in, you know, a half hour coffee, right? I mean, this is like, that's a big question. But, you know, if it's a question that's like, I'm thinking about these three choices and I, I want to know what you, what you, from your perspective, what do you think would be a better choice? Okay, well, that's actually a question you could get somewhere with in half an hour, right? Um, you know, and just, playing out even further. I, I mean, just literally today, I wrote a, a, a recommendation letter for uh, one of my um, team members who wants to go to business school. And she, you know, she did an amazing job of she like, sent me an email the day before, like, here's a reminder, you know, I, I, I hope this isn't presumptuous, but I actually answered all the questions for you, you know, feel free to write them differently if you want. But you know, if you want to just copy and paste, like, so I mean, it was just making it very easy for me to be, to remember to do it, to be there, to add whatever I could add that was unique versus sort of like, oh my God, I got to write you know, a thousand words about this person. And it, it, I don't think you always have to do that, but it was just a good example of like how to, how to really structure that relationship where she definitely got the best that I could offer in the you know, hour that I had allotted to do that task today. You know? So the more you can think about that, I think the better. I also think as a mentor to get feedback from the mentee is helpful. In other words, mm -hmm. we may talk about something and ultimately you might apply that and it's helpful to know how it worked and how it didn't work. So that also strengthens your relationship in terms of how you communicate and how you translate that. So I think the give and take is really important. Yeah. Mm. So I think we're, we're coming up to about 20 minutes left. I, we definitely wanted to, to make sure there was time to answer questions. I, I know we've had a few that have come in already and maybe we could try to get to those, but you know, absolutely um, hit us up with questions about, about this and we'll, we'll spend a little time answering questions and then we've got a little bit of a uh, bit at the end for, for a closing thought. Um, so we have a question here from Luke about how do you navigate during the pandemic period any 
suggestions during Zoom interviews. Um, Be prepared. Mm. You know, it, it, it's always it's always helpful to me if if someone like has come with notes and has like a very specific set of questions that they want to ask and is not just like, hey, nice to talk to you, you know? Um, yeah. Be prepared. I, I you know, it, it's it's interesting. I've not had to interview. We were just talking about it actually before we started the panel that we've, I've not had to interview or hire dur during uh, COVID and I'm ha I potentially am having a project that might be coming back in the next uh, couple months that I will have to hire during this period. And it's, you know, it's really interesting. Like, how do you, how do you do that? I don't know, um, uh, Nathan, if you can maybe speak to it because it sounds like you've been growing uh, during this period, but it's, you know, it's uncharted territory for me right now. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be learning too. Uh -huh. Yeah, James and I actually were just talking about that before we got on that, but there, there are pros and cons. And I don't know if you get as old as I do, that's kind of the only way you think of the world nowadays. Um, there, there's always a cost and there's always a benefit and, and it's up to you to find it. Uh, for sure, it's difficult, right? Doing Zoom interviews, you lose that in-person quality. Um, it's always like, oh, am I on mute? Um, oh, were you about to say something? Uh, so just practice that stuff. Practice with your, your other classmates. Um, I think the real benefit is that it becomes really unlimited in terms of time and location. Um, so today, I literally in my calendar had back-to-back 30-minute -back interviews with four people. There's no way I could have done that in a physical studio um, because we need to greet them, we need to place them in a room. You know, there's there's a huge amount of like, you know, pre and post things that need to happen just from an operational perspective. And, and then me, I can't be running room to room. So it, just, it seems really specific, but there's no way I could have done like four back to back interviews in, in kind of non pandemic times. Um, and then I think the somewhat obvious benefit is. Um, you could be in Providence and I'm in San Francisco and um, you now have the same advantage that someone in San Francisco has. Uh, and being a student located in, in Providence um, was, was a huge issue when, when I was applying for internship. So um, I think you've kind of eliminated that barrier, which works in, in your favor quite a bit. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I actually am kind of optimistic about your chances <laughs> speaking to the students you know i think that you know knock on wood the economy seems to have stabilized you know a lot of companies just weren't hiring at all even if their businesses were pretty strong like our business is fairly strong but we just were like we don't know what's going to happen so let's just kind of lock it down and that i think is starting to thaw pretty pretty much across the board i mean as long as you're as long as the company's in reasonably good shape pretty consistently I'm hearing like, yeah, yeah, projects are coming, things are happening. So I think it's going to start to uh, thaw a bit. And, you know, on the one hand, it could be seen as bad. We've never really, most people have never really hired in this COVID environment, but I actually think that's kind of an opportunity because nobody's ever done it before. So it's not like there's a really established right and wrong way to do things. And, you know, as long as you can get in a conversation like this, we're all just used to kind of interacting with people through, you know, these little rectangles and everybody's the same. So sort of show up and be smart. And like, I think that will work. Um, yeah. Um, I wanted to say that there's a couple of questions in the, in the chat mm. um, or in the Q and A uh, people saying that they've been anxious about all the in-person opportunities and connections they've missed out on due to the pandemic. Um, well, first off, like, across the board, everyone has missed out on those things. So it's not like something that specifically is going to impact like only you, it's impacting everybody. And I think the fact that you are attending, you know, discussions like this and, you know, kind of putting yourself out there for different things. I mean, that's the same as networking. It's like if you would attend this panel session, if we had it in New York or something. Um, and that that's all good. Um, and th that's really kind of all you need to do to be like, still be a good candidate for full-time positions. Like, um, 
I don't know. It, it's it's gonna it's gonna change. <laughs> it's not always yeah, gonna be I mean, like this, and then it's gonna be sort of booming. I think. Yeah, I I will second what Ryan is saying. I think I I empathize with being anxious about the missed in person connections because I I feel it even though I, you know, I'm not trying to go out there and get my first job. I'm, I'm, you know, but I still have to network and kind of meet clients and have experiences. So I have interesting things to say about the work that I'm doing. And, and, I, you know, that was actually a fear that I had probably three months in where I was sitting there and I was like, well, how am I going to be creative and make good stuff if I'm looking like at the inside of my home 24 seven and, you know, it's, I, you know, I think we're all anxious similarly, maybe for different reasons, but, you know, I think we'll all come out of this and, and it'll be, you know, our, our careers and our lives will be slightly changed when we come out of this, but I, I don't think you're going to fall behind. So that's, I don't think that's a reason to be anxious. I think we're all sort of on pause in a way. So, yeah. Um, and someone else asked, what are productive alternatives to summer internships if there's a scarcity and opportunities? I've actually still been taking internships. Um, I'm doing, I've kind of worked out like a different way of doing remote internships so that I still have the opportunity to work with people. Um, and I think that um, it, it's not a bad thing to reach out to people and ask if they would be willing to do that as well, or um, if there's something room within their company to work out something along those lines. Um, I think, you know, um, there's definitely like a scarcity of in-person opportunities, but honestly, everybody is sitting around working from home or just <laughs> not doing anything. <laughs> so, it, you know, it might be, it might be helpful to have some people that you can talk to a few times a week and and uh, answer questions and and help teach. Yeah, I think you know if you can't get an internship, like make something. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, what do you get out of an internship? You get some connections, uh, but you can make connections lots of ways. You get the line on your resume, okay. Um, and if you're lucky, you get to make something cool. And often you you don't. <laughs> you know, quite often the sad truth about a lot of internships is you know you sort of uh, play a small role in something. You know, unfortunately. And um, you know, I think these days, if you say you can't find an internship, well, help a friend with a project, do the titles for their movie, or you know, shoot a video for their product release, or whatever, make something. And that's probably it could be, you could spin that in a story that's more impressive than you know, being the super junior, the junior most person in a giant firm and you did something. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of a hot tip, another hot tip. Uh, so one of my internships, I literally cleaned mouse balls and mouse pads. And so for you young kids, mice used to have balls inside of them. <laughs> um, and so uh, I totally, yeah. The, so the hot tip here is um, when I advise kids, um, on their portfolios, I, I say, treat it like you have a job. Um, you work 40 hours a week at a job. Um, think of your portfolio as a job. You spend 40 hours a week on that sucker. And so it, it, the same would be true as if you don't get an inter internship right away, work on something, make yourself a project and make it like a class project or make it like work and do it eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. Um, and, and employers or potential employers will be able to see that work and it will, it will have value um, and, and it shows drive yeah. and right. ambition. And, yep. and if it's not something that you can make because of the pandemic, like for example, a film, um, you know, writing takes the most time and that's what everybody has time, has right now, everybody has time. So, you know, write a script, like, do your pre-production, prepare and plan so that when this is all through, you can kind of launch right into it, you know? Yeah, it's important. Yeah, I, oh, go ahead, sorry, Renee. I was gonna say, it's important to set the bar for yourself, you know? Don't always look for somebody to set it for you. Yeah. And create those assignments. Again, I think it's very impressive, again, to go into a firm and say, you know what? 
I couldn't find it during the COVID season, but I decided to set my own bar. You know, I decided to look at a campaign and make it stronger from my perspective, you know, give myself a whole week of just designing something that nobody told me to do, but I wanted to do because I want to make it better. And as an employer, I mean, you look for that quality in the people that you hire, you know, that they, they have the drive, they, they have the work ethic and they want to set the bar higher for themselves. So I think it's, uh, it's an important thing to know early on. Um, okay, so we've got seven minutes left, and I want to do a little rapid fire question at the end, but let's just quickly do a, a scan through. Are there any other questions that we think we can hit on in the kind of time frame that makes sense? I can actually answer anonymous attendees question for James and Krista about this summer. Um, one of the things that I've been doing a lot at Gensler is talking to our clients about their sort of return to work plans. And I, what I think seems most likely right now is, and the question was basically where will we be this summer, is that um, you know, vaccinations will start to happen more, that will, most of these companies will start to gradually increase their in-presence working. I think very few will require people to come back uh, until fall at the earliest, but I suspect we'll start to see more, it'll just be a gradual more and more in-person stuff getting layered on. But for the purposes of this conversation, like it's hard to imagine sort of flying to a city and scheduling a bunch of in-person interviews anytime soon you know, maybe, maybe next year. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And speaking from the Bay Area, San Francisco and the tech sector in general, the way that I think of it, and, and this is through discussion with other leaders in, in the, the area of work that we're in, is that it, there's always a fight for talent. That, that's just true in, in our specific field and industry. And so being able to, to work remotely um, as a company policy, and it will be a hybrid. There's no, no two ways around it. Um, there will be some people remote and some people in person, will be a competitive advantage for companies. And so when companies fight for talent, they're looking for any competitive advantage. And so being flexible and having a hybrid model in person, remote, will be a competitive advantage for a very long time. Yeah, I think that's right. That's right. Well, uh, I think, oh, go, ahead. go ahead, no, you have a question. Uh, one other thing is just people were asking like, what are the best platforms, you know, or finding events or whatever, you know, do your research, like within every, within every industry, there's different groups um, that exist. You know, I mean, there's a, there's a million of them within <laughs> um, the uh, film industry and, and, you know, different forums and places you can go that are doing, you know, different workshops or, um, networking events, things like that, um, on, you know, on top of trying to use, um, LinkedIn and the RISD network, et cetera, uh, you know, and the ones that were put into the chat. So. All right. I mean, we're, we're in the last five minutes and so let's just do, I think we should do two things. One is, um, maybe we can commit to answering some of these questions on the RISD network site. So I, I don't know if we, if we set up, uh, invite people if there's questions we didn't answer or if you have future questions, post them there. And, you know, Ryan and Krista, you, you keep us honest about making sure we come and log in and check in on that. And we'll answer questions there since might as well keep that part of the conversation going. I thought what might be nice as a way to kind of round it out is um, to sort of ask this question to the group, which is, you know, it's a kind of an oldie but a goodie uh, and a variation on uh, knowing if you knew then what you know now, you know, what would you do differently? The, what advice would you give your, your, your RISD self? If you could go back however many years it was to when you were a student, what advice would you give yourself about this subject? Start with you, Renee. You're in my top left. I do think it's the same as how I felt then and that's take the limits off at that stage, you mm -hmm. know? be open, don't put yourself in a box uh, because really even one field might lead to something else. And uh, you're just starting. So it's important to be open. I mean, it's such a different time than I, you know, to be at your stage years ago, it's such a different world. But I think it is a mindset. And I think that ability to be open is really, really important, particularly in these days. 
So. Um, I, I feel like when I was a student, I was always very, very anxious to start working. And it was definitely something that I was looking forward to. And even though I loved being at RISD and I loved everything I was doing, I didn't take the time to enjoy it as much as I probably should have. And I was always running off to an internship or, or who knows what. And, um, you know, just you only get the one time to be in school and, and to really focus on your abilities and your, your technical skill and your kind of voice in a way. So really, really use that time because once you get into the, to the world, you're answering to a, a, a totally different, a, a different calling in a way it's, you know, you're trying to please your clients and, and make something that is marketable and sellable. Your skills are sellable. And, you know, I, 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 do, I do think that the internships and, and the, the anxiousness and everything that I did to work through the time that I was at RISD definitely helped get my career to where I wanted it to be. But at the same time, I needed to balance it a little bit more with enjoying being in school and focusing on who I am as a designer and I kind of wish I had spent more time doing that. That's really, that's really good advice. Um, I, and I, I was kind of in the same boat. I was very, I like, was just like hustling constantly <laughs> while I was a student. And, you know, and, and I think um, one of the things, you know, I did wish that I enjoyed it more, um, but I also think that, um, you know, as soon as I graduated, if I if I wasn't like instantly employed, or if I if I had a job that only lasted like three weeks, but then I didn't have another job for like another month, I would just be like completely despairing, and just be like, oh, what am I doing with my life? And you know, and I think that um, just don't be discouraged. Like the work will come. Like the first year is always rough after you graduate, um, and just try to make as many connections and just try to be as open um, as Renee said to as many things as possible. I, I want to jump in for one second and just point out that Ryan and I graduated in 2002 and it was post 9-11 and, yeah. and I, we moved to New York <laughs> and yeah and we moved to New York and no one was hiring. Yes. It was awful. Yeah. It was like literally, literally apocalyptic. So so it's we, we've been through it we survived we're here we we both have successful careers and and you guys will too so don't be discouraged by what's happening right now we're almost through it yeah, yeah. I also co-founded a company in the aftermath of the the financial crisis of 2008 yeah so. <laughs> Nate and I joined the workforce uh one year before the dot-com bubble collapse oh right uh, we had 9-11 three years later two years later and yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like it's just it's just part of things ebb and flow and it's that's not right. it's yeah. not always going to be like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's that is what mentors have told me is that there's these kind of seven year cycles and of, of mm -hmm. you don't really get it until you go through the first cycle, but but at least maybe today you've heard that for the first time. Um and you'll be reminded of it. Um, well, it wouldn't be fair if I didn't answer my own question. So I think, um, I think you know, the advice I would give my old self is there's a there's an idea that that um, when I was at SY Partners we used to talk about, which is building the network in advance of needing it. And I think this is a really important idea with networking in general, but also even things like mentorship, which is you know if you only if you only put the effort out to build relationships with people when you need something from them, it doesn't really work that well, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it's much better to spend time building lots of relationships because you don't, not because you need something from them, but because they're interesting, you, you like them. There's something about them that, that you know, kind of gets you going and, you know, build that network because the bigger you build your network, faster, the, the more interesting things will come from it. And that's 
collaborators or or clients or jobs or all sorts of things, right? So like sort of build that network as fast as you can, I think. Is my yes. Advice. That's such good advice. Yes. Yeah, it, it helps. It kind of helps. I, I very much like being social and I like people. So it helps to like people because all of a sudden, if you get fascinated by somebody and then they just become your friend and then, you know, five years later, it's like, oh, so-and-so does X, Y, and Z and I actually need that now. And we've built this friendship over the last five years. And, and guess what? It's awesome to work with your friends. So it works out. Yeah. Well, I know we're at time and, I, and I'm sure everybody on this call has got stuff to do with students. I'm sure, you know, if RISD is anything like it was when I was there, your night's just getting started. Uh, and I'm sure uh, other folks have stuff to do. So maybe, um, this is a good moment to wrap. Final words. Um, just that, you know, people do check the discussion forums and, you know, we will answer any questions that we couldn't get to there. Yeah. And don't be afraid to reach out to people. I 